This is Decimus Fabius writing to all good people of Rome. I implore you, move away from the Eternal City because the Frankish hordes are just closing in to the Eternal City and I doubt that the Imperial Legions will be enough to hold them off. Then again, who am I fooling here? Because I just cannot send this letter as I'm prisoner to the most ruthless barbarian warlord ever lived, Claudio the Cruel. And it seems he cares about nothing or anything except for his own power and butchering innocent citizens and taking their possessions to himself. With heavy hearts, I'm beginning this fifth letter, and I hope, I pray that someone will be able to find this soon enough, so that it could be of some use. But it seems every, even the darkest clouds can have silver, silver lining, as in the north, the Franks are facing some troubles, as the Burgundy are besieging Campus Frisi. I'm a bit doubtful that their strength will be enough to take it. Perhaps it will, because Campus Frisi is defended only by peasants. And the Celts are besieging Samaro Priva. I hope their host will be enough. And then the Romans, under leadership of Captain Suacrius, decided to besiege Burdicala. However, Claudio has set his sights to new areas to conquer, new mercenaries to hire. And he has ordered that some reinforcements be sent to Burdicala. And it seems the Roman hosts have lifted the sieges of Augusta Vindelicorum and Vicus Alemanni. It might mean that they are in position to threaten Augusta Treverorum. However, this lifting the sieges has given the Franks a good opportunity to reinforce those two cities that were besieged earlier and now the host under leadership of Genobaud is moving towards north and I'm afraid it will gather all the reinforcements it can along the way and it will move against the Burgundy and the Celts while the host in the south under command of Tancred who is still but a young man, and he has achieved so much, like the emperors of old. And he is taking his, most of his host and moving westwards towards Ravenna, which was seized. And even though it's de defended by elite forces led by Aulus the Thinker, I'm afraid that it just won't be enough against these ravaging barbarians. And it seems at least some of the Roman hosts in the east are lacking direction. I'm not certain what Cornelius Polanus is doing there. But he lifted the seeds of Vicus Alemanni so that it could be reinforced. And then he besieged it again. And this in turn has led the reinforcements led by Genobaud 
turn around and move in to aid the besieged settlement. A small Roman host led by Captain Manius is moving against Mediolanum. However, Jovinus, with some reinforcements from the north, moved in to reinforce the city, and it's clearly too well defended for Jovinus to be able to take it. And at the same time, those reinforcements have allowed, allowed some of the previous garrisons to join Tancred. And it seems they are still waiting for something in Ravenna, perhaps some reinforcements. However, in the south, Claudio is pushing what little remains of the Roman hosts before him, and he has arrived at Taraco. Host defenses are led by Governor Her Herius Corpulentus. And um, it seems that the host there will just be too much. The Franks are even sending some more troops from Avaricum to aid in the battle in Burdicala so that they can pacify that region more easily. So it seems that cities are be uh, besieged almost everywhere and almost always the besieger seems to have the upper hand at the moment. So perhaps some aggressiveness would be in order to hold the advancing Franks in Italy. Because I'm afraid that during next year Ravenna will fall and after that the Frankish host will march towards Rome herself. The Frank defenders in Campus Frisi mostly comprised of peasants, and that of course is good news for the attackers. However, the core of the defenses were Levi Spearmen, and it might be that they can at least inflict some heavy casualties. Of course, the Lombardians had some of their famous or infamous berserkers with them. So perhaps they might be able to inflict some damage there. However, Claudio has given a direct command that whenever berserkers are sighted, they will be the primary target for any missile troops that's nearby because the berserkers don't care about their own security they are blinded by their raids and that makes them rather vulnerable to missile fire This time the Lombards 
have decided to make some wise moves as they are behind the next of shielded infantry. So the casualties they will take from the arrows will be diminished, at least somewhat. However, still those arrows are just murdering them. It's good to know if we have to face Lombard Berserkers at some point that we need to use arrows to take them down before they can cause too much damage to us. And almost all of the Berserkers have to gone down. And it seems the Franks plan to use their missile troops as their most effective weapon. So they are moving into position to fire at the flanks. Okay. So, apparently the missile troops just were not brave enough. But they are starting to target the Burgundy warlords. And with that, they hope... ...to turn the tide of the battle, or if not this battle, at least the war that's going on. However, once again, it was too little, too late, and the defenders were just butchered, and they failed to kill either of the Burgundy warlords. I would advise if, the, if you have some diplomats in the area, you try to form an alliance with the Burgundy, and perhaps even with the Celts, so that you could better coordinate the attacks against the Franks. I doubt that the Franks will suffer the assaults from Burgundy much longer. And they are already moving in to face them. And now, in the west, near Burdikahla, we have three legionary cohorts facing a horde of Franks. And if the cohorts manage to hold their own here, we might have some slight chance of trying to take back what we have lost in the west. Or we might force Claudio to come back which will give us time in Spain to prepare our defenses. And this time the Franks were trying to divide our forces 
and they were successful there. So the Frankish reinforcements coming from the city were able to surprise one legionary cohort and that left the majority of the Roman host vulnerable. The Comitatensis were fighting bravely. They should never be underestimated, but there just were too many of the enemies for them to take care of. And the barbarians were massing their cavalry and the peasants for a charge. And even the bravest legionary begins to waver when a cavalry charge is at his unprotected back. And as I was afraid of, the whole Roman host was slaughtered in the battle. Or perhaps they left one man to get away on purpose, so the fear of Franks might spread to the host next to the one that was wiped out. Tarrako did fall as feared very easily. And Claudio left the city with minimal defenses and gathered most of his host and marched, marched onwards. towards Karthakonova, where the Caesar Publius Flavius was holding his court, however he had neglected building of defensive forces and that might prove to be his undoing there. Tancred took after his father and started to hire mercenaries and it seems the governor of Ravenna perished, perhaps there was some foul play. In any case, Ravenna fell and the situation is growing more dire by the moment. Rome herself will be under attack very, very soon. Tancred will only catch his breath before ordering his troops to move forward once more. Fortunately, Rome herself is rather well fortified and well protected, so it will take some time for the barbarians to break through the magnificent walls there.
and Cornelius Bolanus during the siege of uh, Vicus Alemanni found himself surrounded as Genobaud attacked, it, attacked from his rear and Rodulf sallied forth from the city itself. I don't doubt Roman bravery, but the Roman host was clearly outnumbered and it was surrounded, so the situation looked perilous indeed. It would take quite a lot from the Romans to be able to turn this battle to their favor. I'm beginning to notice that I almost begin to speak as if I were one of the Franks. I have spent so much of my time prisoner here that it's beginning to show. And the two armies moved against each other very fast. And it might be that the battle was joined before either host was really ready for that. And it remains to be seen, will it work in favor of the Romans or of the Franks. And it seems the Roman morale begins to waver faster than that of the Franks, especially the Limitane are vulnerable. And this might actually mean the end of the Roman host in this area. And that might mean that the Franks are actually able to combine their forces and that in turn might mean that the Roman presence in this area will be eradicated perhaps surprisingly fast There was a fierce battle between the bodyguards, and for the moment it seemed that the Roman general would emerge victorious, but then the Frankish reinforcements showed up. The Frankish general had been cunning to lure the Roman general into a trap. and he was glad to escape with his life. And the Roman host was utterly beaten in the battle.
and all of these victories meant that the Franks really were able to amass a mighty host. And the troops led by Genobaut headed towards Augusta Treverorum or Vicus Franki and they were tasked to take the fight to the Burgundy and finally show them that the Franks are not to be trifled with. And at the same time the Celts brought another host to the northern coast of Samaropriva, a mighty host this time. And I think they are in a good position to make heavy blows against the Franks. However, as the Frankish hosts go stronger by the minute, I or by the day, by the week, I doubt that they will be strong enough. Uh, so the Celts will be strong enough to keep those uh, Celts in check. And Tancred has the host, has the host he needs to begin the siege of Rome. And it is exactly as I feared. The Eternal City is under threat rather soon. While a Frankish war band of hunters came from Augusta Vindelicorum to relieve the besieged Mediolanum, there was legendary first cohort, the elite of the elite, leading the attack there. But will they prove enough in the face of rather overwhelming numbers? The Frankish hunters started to hunt Roman peasants first. And it seems the Roman captain rather wisely has decided to withdraw. It's better to withdraw with honor than be foolhardy and lose all the troops. That could be, for example, used in defense of Rome herself. And the commander of that warband was adopted to the Frankish family and the warband itself reinforced Mediolanum while the warlord was rewarded by the governorship of Augusta Vindelicorum. In the south, Publius Flavius has begun training troops, however, 
they are nothing more than peasants and with that kind of forces anyone can guess what the end result of the battle will be. And there seems to be some justice in the world as Vicus Franki has been struck by plague. And that most certainly is fitting punishment from God to this people of heathens that deserve every misfortune and scourge that can be imagined. Because they do dare to besiege Rome herself. And it seems it, the host led by Captain Marioranus has been ordered to pull back from the vicinity of Vicus Alemanni. And from August Treverorum, the Frankish host is marching towards the Burgundy, and I'm afraid that they have nothing with which to engage such a large host. The Celts seem to be content in besieging Samarop Riva. However, that particular tactics leaves them open to a counterattack from the Franks. And the Frankish horde is already on the move to engage them. And to relieve the city under siege. And what's this? Did somehow the Franks bribe the Celts? Or perhaps it's because the Frankish faction leader perished that serves him right? So perhaps Publius Flavius will be able to beat the uh, host there. But it seems my hopes once again have been in vain. And the Frankish hordes have proven to be victorious. And it seems Tancred now, the Lord of Franks, has ordered reinforcements for his troops, uh, while Claudio, a new general, new ambitious general, is moving against Campus Frisi. I'm afraid that despite the loss of the Frank King, the hosts in Hispania will soon continue to push onwards against it seems there are some some people even rebelling against the lawful emperor and that really makes me sad. So, Claudio was given proper burial, and uh, the Franks are saying that the young Claudio in the north 
is some kind of reincarnation of the old flag faction leader. And such is the fear that hearing even the name of Claudio in the north strikes at the heart of the Celts that they have decided to sue for peace. And are pulling back. And it might even be that they will move to engage some good honest Romans nearby. To uh, slake their lust for conquest. And it seems Tancred has decided to starve Rome. And a new general has emerged to lead the defenses, Augustus Flavius. And I clearly, ho dearly hope and pray that in this case, Norman est Omen And there he will be just as great a leader as Augustus was some 300 years ago. And to make matters more complicated, some Vandal hordes are moving into the Italia. And that might mean some difficulties for the Franks in the area. In the north, the Frankish host took some heavy beating while capturing Campus Frisi, but it was able to capture it and it seems the Claudio the Younger is proving to be just as ambitious and brutal as Claudio the Elder was before him. And now the defenses of Samaropriva are so great that I doubt that any of the Celts are foolhardy enough to attack the city. And at the same time, Carthago Nova has been mostly emptied of troops. Perhaps the Roman rebel general Sebastianus Priscus will seize the opportunity to take the city. However, a reinforcing warband led by Captain Osa is already marching towards Carthaginova, while Rome herself continues to be besieged. And the Vandals have mighty hosts indeed, and that clearly could mean some troubles for the Frankish armies in the area. Who would have thought that such a mysterious ways can be used by God to deliver us from the scourge of the Franks? It seems even that Vicus Franki has been besieged and the Franks are scrambling to get their troops into position to defend their capital. 
while the host under Claudia is moving against the Lombardy in the north. Cordoba, the home city of the rebels in this area, has been besieged, or rather emptied of garrison, which will mean most likely that it will be besieged sooner rather than later. Because already the Frankish scouts have estimated the situation there and are moving in to engage. It seems the Lombardy hordes are at least somewhat pulling back, but that leaves the host besieging Vicus Franchi vulnerable to enemy attack. They do have strong enough army, but the army comprises very heavily of those Lombardi berserkers, and if the Romans, or rather the Franks, can get their archers into good enough position, I think those berserkers will fall like birds from the sky. And the battle is joined as missile skirmish, neither side willing to move to engage the other side too quickly. And even the feared Lombard berserkers can be broken it seems. And the Burgundy host was forced to withdraw. And I'm a bit afraid that the Franks will continue to follow them. 
to take the fight to the heartlands. Because they have already seen that their nation can be an empire. Almost as mighty as the Roman Empire, that they clearly perceive to be their example. And that drives them to even more bold conquests and taking new territory. Frankish mercenary armies are being consolidated near Cordoba and it remains to be seen what they will do while the siege of Rome still continues. The defenders are clearly well equipped, however Augustus Flavius lacks command experience, but the Franks are not brave enough to attack the city. Once again they are beginning to raise taxis to support their hosts that have grown perhaps a bit too expensive for them. And this, my friends and countrymen, is the last thing that I shall write in this letter. So it clearly seems that the, by the death of Claudio, the Frankish expansion slowed down somewhat. And of course the presence of the Vandals in their area clearly hinders them as well. However, I am gravely concerned about the siege of Rome that's currently ongoing. It has been going on several years and um, I'm afraid that the city will eventually fall. So once again I implore you wherever you are. I, I really hope that you took my advice and fled for example to Carthage. I hope that you are well and now especially you need to pray from all of your heart for the good of the Emperor and of the Empire and of every Roman soldier in the front. It seems that the Empire is on the direst situation since I don't know how many hundred years. Yours, Decimus Fabius. <laughs>